Hey there, I'm Jessica from Shutterstock. Today we are going to make the impossible come alive by creating surreal environments. In Photoshop, we will learn how to combine two photos to make a composite image. It is all about selecting the right photos, which is why Shutterstock is one of the best resources because of the large and extensive library. You want to pick photos that have a similar composition, color balance, and exposure. And you want to be mindful if you are a Photoshop newbie that you are selecting photos that are more simple and have less complex backgrounds. It will be way easier to blend these photos together. So let's select our photos and head right into Photoshop now to get started. So here we are in Photoshop. These are the two images that we will be blending together. I have them opened already and I'm just going to add the second one onto the first one. I'm going to double click on this background layer to turn it into a new layer. I'm just going to click OK and then I'm going to go to my move tool and I'm just going to click and drag it over into our very first image. I'm going to free transform this. I'm going to press Ctrl and T on my keyboard and I'm going to rotate this at a perfect 90 degree angle. I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that it stays at that perfect angle and I'm also going to drag the corner because I want to enlarge it as well. And once we have it in the right placement, we are just going to go here to the opacity. I'm going to turn this down. It's just going to be a temporary situation because we are just going to see what the placement looks like on her face. And once we have that all set, let's create a layer mask by going here down at the bottom of your layers panel and we're going to click that. So once we have that set, let's go and turn off the visibility of this first layer and let's go here to the background. Let's start out by using the selection tool. We have three routes to go. One is the magic wand, the second is quick selection, and the third is object selection. For this example, I will be using the quick selection and I will be selecting her face as well as her clothes because I want to make sure the texture isn't on those parts of the first image. So let's head in and create our layer mask to get started. We are going to select her face and her outfit because we want to make sure that that texture is taken out in our layer mask. So we can do that by using the quick selection tool. We also have the object selection tool and the magic wand. It depends on what your certain image is. But for this one, I'm gonna stick with the quick selection tool. So I'm just gonna zoom in on her face and with the quick selection tool, I'm just going to select her face. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to go in and fine tune all of those details later. So if there is something that you want to take out, you can always press Alt or Option on your keyboard and then you're going to take out a little piece of what was selected that you don't want to be selected. If you want to go ahead and add anything, you can just go ahead and go over there. Like I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that the main area is selected. So once we have that all selected and ready to go, let's go up here to the first layer and put back on the visibility. Let's make sure that this layer mask is selected. So you don't wanna make sure that this photo is selected. You want to make sure that the layer mask is selected. So then we are going to go to the paintbrush tool and we are going to change our color to black. Black will take away anything on the layer mask and white will be adding to the layer mask. So if we go here, we are just going to click and drag over this and you can see that it's going to take away our selection. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger so we have more room. So once we are done with that, we can go back to the other layer and we can turn the opacity all the way up to 100%. So now you see it's not very blended in, it just looks like an image on top of another image, but we are going to fix that by using a blending mode. So if we go here to the blending mode, we can go here to hard light. We have different options that you can use, you can play around with each of them. Overlay is good, soft light and hard light. Vivid light is also good, but for this one, I'm going to stick with hard light, so I'm just going to select that now. So now we have this, I'm going to do the marquee tool just to click anywhere, to click out of the selection that we just did. Now let's make those fine tune adjustments. 
In this tutorial, I am showing you the tools on how to get started, but if you do have a more complex image, you do want to spend more time on these details, as the more time you spend, you'll really see it in the final result, as it will look more realistic in the end. So let's jump back into Photoshop and make those fine tune adjustments to our layer mask right now. So now we can go in and fine tune all of this by using the paintbrush tool. So I'm gonna go up here and make sure that the hardness is set to 0%. We can change the size here, but you can also change it with the brackets on your keyboard. So now that I have this set, let's just zoom in a bit more and let's just clean up this edge. So I'm just gonna go here and clean up her hairline to make sure that it is more blended in naturally. And we can go through all of these edges. And if you take away too much, it's okay because you can always select white and then you can go ahead and add what you took away. So it's really just a game between adding and taking away until you find something that works best for your images. So you want to make sure that you have all of these lines blended in naturally. And if you see here, I'm going to do the same thing for the side of her face as well. So I'm going to change that to black and I am just going to take that out so it looks a bit more natural. So we can take out any part like on her earring here and if we go over to the side, we can fix this as well so it looks a little bit more blended. So then I can switch it to white and then I can just add these little details so it looks a little bit more natural. And now I'm just gonna double click the hand to see all of the progress that we've done. We can take away this edge right here. It's always best to look at the bigger picture of everything to see where you need to fix these little details. So I'm just gonna go here and change this to black. And I'm just going to fix this line right here. And this edge. So again, I'm going to change this to white and I'm just going to add a little bit so this looks more blended in. And now we are done with all of the fine tuning details. Let's go in and make an adjustment layer. Feel free to spend as much time as you need fine tuning these adjustments. If you spend more time on these details, you will really be able to tell in the end result and it will look like a more realistic scene. But we are moving on to our last step, which is an adjustment layer. Like I mentioned before, you want to choose photos that have similar exposure and color balance, but if you end up with two photos that you really want to use that look very different, an adjustment layer is our final step to blend it all together. So let's head back into Photoshop and I'll show you how to do that now. So if we go here to our layers panel, we're gonna go here to adjustment, and then we can adjust any of these adjustment layers. So we have brightness and contrast, we have levels, we have hue and saturation and color balance. For this one, I'm going to do hue and saturation. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm just going to decrease the saturation. But before I do that, you want to make sure that you're creating a clipping mask by pressing this little button at the bottom. So once we have that selected, I'm just going to decrease the saturation and I can also change the hue right here. I want to make sure that the trees match her eyeshadow, so I'm going to change the hue. You can also change the lightness to see what works for you. It's best to look at the whole picture and the lighting of what's going on in your first image and what's going on in your second image so that you can make these adjustments to make sure that the bigger picture is all blended together. That is all for today. I hope that this inspired you to create many more composite images in the future. Whether you want to tell a unique story or make your wildest dreams come true in Photoshop. Photoshop is still one of the best tools to use to create these composite images. So spend as much time as you need, create something that you love, and I will see you next time.